Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dean, and I'm going to be doing your January 1st to the 15th, 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Capricorn, January 1st to the 15th, 2022 Capric Capricorn, angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand the left hand side is our inner self, the middle our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the lovers, which is Gemini energy. So if we have Gemini within our natal chart, that's coming through very powerfully here at our root. We have the wheel of fortune and we have temperance, which is Sagittarius energy. So if we have Sagittarius within our natal chart, natal chart or are born on the cusp with Sagittarius, this is coming through very powerfully at our root as a root form of our personality. Sagittarius and Gemini are also sister signs, so that's going to be very interesting. They can really build each other up or they can fight like sisters, so just, just be aware of that. We have the magician in our inner selves. There's real magic to us, which is beautiful. And we have the sun. I mean, that is absolutely brilliant. We are shining. We are on point. There is just there's just glory around us and that's that's really quite cool our emotional selves we have the two of cups we have temperance coming through again strong sagittarius energy we have the king of pentacles which represents us in the minor arcana we're represented by the devil in the major arcana by the by the pentacles in the minor arcana so that's very powerful here we then have the five of swords in the public arena and the knight of swords we're going to be facing something we've faced before like some sort of fight some sort of something that we're like having to prove ourselves around and about and yet we come out as absolutely victorious we're not we're not going to be sitting back the way that we we once did there's going to be real tenacity here within us so let's look at our chakra not our chakra energy the energy we need to be mindful of angels and spirit guides show me clearly oh goodness Ooh. luckily i caught them all there we go Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is the Prince of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is energy of, I want things to move now. This is energy of impatience. This is energy of a fire. It's just like, I need things to burn bright. I need things to go in this direction. We're not going to want to think things through as 
well as we, we really should. So that's something to be mindful of. We're also going to be really attracted to people who are going and doing and seem to have this action to them. And yet kind of standing back and taking things in, it wouldn't be us being on the sidelines because Spirit is saying we don't want to be on the sidelines, but taking this in and really having a, a firm and powerful understanding before we go after the the thing that we that we want right now, that's going to be something that's very important. It's kind of like step back. It's kind of like looking at making a big purchase or making a purchase. Step back, see if you really want it. If you really want it, you know, in, in a week or in a few days time, then go for it. But don't do anything rash right now and don't be caught in by people who are like, if not now, then you're absolutely out. So just, just be mindful of that energy. Then we have our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So we have two. We have the sacral chakra and we have the throat chakra. Inspiration and truth. We are going to be inspired by truth. That's going to be something that's very important for us during this time. Now, Capricorn, it is something that's very important for us, period, end of discussion anyway. So during this time, we're going to, to be looking at we're really going to be feeling our sacral chakra and our sacral chakra is where our creative energy is held but it's also and it's also where our sensual energy is held but it's also where a lot of trauma and drama from this life and past lives is held so there's going to be a sense here of of blockage like being held back doubting that we can move forward the way that we want to and then the truth that's coming in the throat chakra is saying embrace what you need embrace what you desire speak your truth and see what happens see the new dawn that comes in and starts to inspire us so instead of saying well everybody likes this so i'm going to say i like it it's like no maybe i don't like this maybe i want i want that or maybe i need to do this for me instead of that and it doesn't have to be anything big but it's like i'm starting to stand on my own two feet in my awareness of myself not in the alignment of somebody else so that's going to be a game changer so let's talk about things astrologically speaking on the first of january we have the best way of starting the year we have the sun trine uranus now this is absolutely wonderful energy this is a time where we are comfortable standing out, when we are embracing who we are, we will also have no problem expressing our individuality and should let ourselves shine. We really should. We have that ability within us. We have the sun within us. We need to let ourselves shine. And this is going to be the perfect time for it. We will also be in tune with the world around us and be getting inspiration from our dreams, from this kind of set, from this sixth sense that is leading us forward. We then also have on the 1st of January, we have Mercury trine the North Lunar Node. Now, Mercury rules Gemini energy. So with the Mercury with Mercury trine the North Lunar Node, this is a very positive alignment as well. It is said that our life purpose echoes between the North and the South Lunar Nodes. It is also said in astrology that the head of the drag, like, the North Lunar Node is the head of a dragon. The South Lunar Node is the tail of the dragon, right? So the head sees where it's going. The tail balances the whole entire thing. So this is going to be a time where we're seeing and we're balancing and we're gaining a greater understanding. We will also very much enjoy figuring things out, the whys and the how comes about everything, about people around us, about ourselves. That becomes very important and something that we're very intrigued with. We will also not take things personally on this day, which is very good news. On the 2nd of January, we have the new moon in Capricorn, which is going to affect us quite powerfully because we, of course, are Capricorns. So just being aware of that is going to be very good. Also on the 2nd of January, we have Mercury entering into Aquarius. Now again, we have Gemini energy, which is ruled by Mercury coming forward at our base. Now Mercury really likes being in Aquarius. It's a very positive energy for it to be in. We get a very positive outlook on things. On things. The kicker is that on the 14th of January, we have Mercury going retrograde. And as Mercury goes retrograde, you know, things become a little bit more confusing. Now it can Things can stay in smooth sailing for a little bit, but, but just be mindful. When Mercury goes retrograde, we definitely feel it. On the 5th of January, we have Venus sextile Neptune. Now with Venus sextile Neptune, this is a very passionate day and we need to express our feelings. The first thing we're going to do when we have a day filled with this type of passion, filled with this type of need of expression, we're going to think, ooh, I need to just kind of shut my mouth, keep on going, you know, type of thing. And what Spirit is saying here is like, no, I need to express myself. I need to say what I what I need to say. I need to be true and inspired. And this is going to be a day where I need to live that true and inspired life. We are highly creative on this day and enjoy being surrounded by beauty, beautiful people, beautiful, you know, surroundings. Beauty is just going to be 
something that raises our energy vibration. And it doesn't mean that we have to pick out like the prettiest faces in a crowd, just people who are beautiful inside and sure outside as well if we want, but it, that doesn't really matter. We are also going to exude a certain charm that makes us very attractive on this day. So is everybody. So just be prepared for that, that people are going to be very charming as well as we're going to be very charming. And that could be very alluring during this time. Now, a little extra self-care and pampering will go a long way for us on the 5th of January. It will enhance our mood and it will also raise our energy vibrations. So taking time for ourselves, taking care of ourselves is going to be a really great thing. On the 8th of January, we have the Sun conjunct Venus. Now the Sun conjunct Venus has the, is the personification of love and of peace. We need to surround ourselves with beauty once again and give ourselves permission to express our emotions. This is a time when low energy vibrational people can hugely affect us in a negative way. They can absolutely bring us down. So be mindful of the people that we are letting into our lives. Be mindful of our surroundings. On the 10th of January, we have Mercury trying Chiron. Again, Mercury playing a big role at our root with the Gemini energy. This is a harmonious aspect that helps us heal ourselves and others. What we have to be mindful of is becoming too almost obsessed with the healing, the healing of ourselves, the healing of others, you know, just becoming too pulled in with, I have to fix everything. So be mindful of that Capricorn. We will have a talent for saying the right thing at the right time. It doesn't mean everything that we're going to say is going to be right, as you know, so just be aware of that. We will also need to follow our own ideas and we will find great inspiration from ancient wisdom, ancient texts, ancient stories, ancient ideas. They're really going to inspire us. On the 11th of January, we have the sun, which comes through very powerfully here in our inner self. So on the 1st of January with the sun trine Uranus, that comes through very powerfully. And now we have the sun sextile Neptune. Now this is a powerfully creative time that should absolutely be utilized. Neptune makes us highly sensitive to our surroundings, but just highly sensitive in and of itself. It's the energy that shows us our soul, that shows us our need for the spiritual, the need for the connection to something more than just us. So be mindful of who we are associating with. And again, be mindful of our surroundings. There is also a lot of psychic potential on this day. So being aware of this and also understanding that it can't overwhelm us to have all these, these insights, all these ideas, all this power coming forward, that can be quite intense. So being aware of that is going to be very important. Also just being aware during this time that our surroundings, the people we surround ourselves ourselves with our our home ourselves that's going to be very important our work you know we're going to be picking up a lot from our surroundings so just be aware of this on the 11th of january mars is squared neptune this alignment brings profoundly profoundly varying energy so this energy is very profound and it is varying we have the energy of positivity which is bravery and glamour but we also have the energy of negativity which is intrigue and scandal so i'm kind of seeing this time as kind of like Hollywood, right? All that glitters isn't gold. And that's going to be something we need to remind ourselves of when everything is glittering and we think, wow, that person absolutely knows everything that's going on, everything that, that should be done or exactly how to move forward. All that glitters isn't, isn't gold. We need to listen to our inner voice and also stand apart from the chaos of the world, not be drawn in to the world's pettiness. On the 14th of January, of course, we have Mercury going retrograde, which affects us quite profoundly because we have Mercury at our root with the Gemini energy here for us. Now, Mercury stays in Aquarius till the 25th of January and then remains in retrograde until the 3rd of February. There's also a shadow period and we'll go in more into that in a later video, but this time is going to be quite intense. Mercury in Aquarius is a little bit more chill. And so the Mercury retrograde might be more chill, but it also brings up profound things that we need to see and positive things that we need to change within our lives. So just be aware of that. We have the lovers and we have our angels undoing so many knots, so much chaos within our lives. And then we have balance coming in. So I really see this quite beautifully, where as we embrace our hearts, our angels are untangling our world for us, untangling the mess that we have made. And that's where we really start to find balance within ourselves. We're starting to fall in love with life again, but we're also starting to find balance, harmony, and prosperity within us, within what we desire, and within the way that we need to move forward for ourselves. It brings us 
to the magician, as above, so below, as I believe it, so it becomes. And the magician is telling us inwardly to embrace our own personal power, to stand before the altar of our existence and say, this is me. This is what I want. This is what I need. This is where I'm headed. So as we start to fall in love with our lives again, as our angels untangle things and in the wheel of fortune, when our angels get to a, a, a knot that has been, you know, quite tight and it is quite tight and has been tied for a long time, we're going to feel like when that knot is undone, we're going to feel a bit of insecurity. We're going to feel a bit of chaos. It's going to be like, oh my gosh, can I move forward that way? I thought that road was blocked to me or I thought that way forward was blocked to me. And what our angels and spirit guides are saying is like, no, things are opening in a way that you hadn't anticipated. And there's going to be chaos that comes in. There's going to be doubt. That's why we need the harmonizing aspect of temperance, the balance of temperance, the subconscious and the conscious, the waking world and the and the soul world coming forward, it brings us to the magician. It brings us again to that sense of I'm standing before the altar. How do I claim this? You know, what, what do I move forward with? How do I move forward? What is my passion? What is my desire? What do I need? And so the magician comes forward and says, am I brave enough? Am I brave enough to stand here in the essence that is me, in the passion that is me, in the power that is me, and let this light radiate off. Let this light radiate forward the things that inspire, the things that embolden, the things that guide me forward in a very real, very open, very honest way. And it brings us to the two of cups. It brings us to this place of healing. It brings us to this place of greater insight within our emotional self, because we're going to say, why aren't I letting myself shine? Why am I holding myself back? And this is going to be a time where we see our natural gifts, you know, our elemental gifts, the gift of our voice, of our breath, the gift of our passion, of our fire, you know, that warms us. It can be even the gift of fire, you know, that warms us and makes our homes cozy, especially if we're in cold climates. The gift of the water that quenches our thirst, but also the blood that flows through our veins, the gift of the earth that we stand on and the food that nourishes us. There's going to be a different way that we start to look at things, that we start to look at ourselves and really letting ourselves shine within that almost elemental power, that primal ancient power of being, of soul, of self, of who we are. And then we have, you know, the healing, beautiful love coming in, the minor arcana lovers card. At our root, we have the major arcana lovers card. But with the two of cups, the minor arcana lovers card comes in at our heart and says, this is how I'm uniting myself. This is how I'm healing. This is how I'm moving forward. Now, this can be healing with another person, but this is also healing with ourselves. This is embracing the love and the passion and the beauty that we have for ourselves that brings us into balance, that brings us into harmony, that has us diving deeper and diving deeper and saying, this is what I need. This is what I want. This is what I love. Our emotions surround us and they can overwhelm us, but there is a real sense of this is the harmony that guides me forward. This is my balance. And as we start to see things more of, does this make me more balanced or does this take me out of my own personal balance? What is it that I'm perpetuating within my own life that is causing me to feel you know, out of sorts, overwhelmed, that is putting more stress on me than eliminating the stress. And it leads us to the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles, in medieval time, the king was the highest, right? You could have women that became, you know, quote unquote, king-like figures, right? Or like Queen Elizabeth I and Queen Victoria, sure. But they were, they were not the norm. And so here, when you have a king coming forward and you have that medieval sentiment around the king, it's like, this is the absolute power. This is the protection of the land. This is the protection of the people. And this is the guiding force forward. And this is what we're embracing within our own selves during this time. This is my guiding force forward to embrace my prosperity, to embrace my bounty, but also to have that connection with the earth, to have that connection with what I am planting, the seeds that I am planting within myself to move me forward, the seeds that I am planting within my intentions, within my actions that will bear fruit or will bear poison. You know, what am I doing that guides me to that next level? And it brings us to the five of swords. In the public arena, we're going to be facing battles that we have faced before, hardships, pains, and disappointments. The difference is, is that we have this radiance to us. We have this confidence to us astrologically and also within the cards that are saying, okay, I'm worth more than just silently backing away. You know, there's more to me than cowering. And this is going to be a time where we stand up for ourselves. This is going to be a time where we say, I take my victory. And instead of 
instead of feeling guilty for it, I take my victory and I move forward in it. I move forward in my power, in my understanding, in my prosperity. Because remember, in medieval times, if you won against a person who challenged you, you were supposed to kill them because that showed your absolute dominance. There wouldn't be a blood feud. There wouldn't be, you know, all this other thing, all these other things that could happen if you totally ground the person into the dirt, you know, <laughs> which isn't the way that we look at things today. We don't want to, like morally and personally speaking, but, you know, it, it did have its effect and it is seen in a bigger kind of societal understanding if we look at things kind of like socio, yeah, through, through a, Okay, we're not going to go down that road, but there is this sense of this is what I need to embrace my prosperity. But actually, we are going to go down that road of what am I grinding into the dust, dust, you know, into the dirt? What is it that the world isn't letting shine forward? What is it that is being held back? And we could be looking at things this way because it's coming through very powerfully in this time. It's like, what is it that I need? What is it that's guiding me forward? What is it that's leading me in this direction of success and prosperity and abundance and looking at it personally but also looking at it on a glo global stand and this is going to be a time where our eyes are open to certain things and this is going to be a time where we start to say oh but did i really want that did i really need that and it leads us to the king of swords it leads us to now really seeing what is truth you know what is true for us what we desire what we want what we need the king of swords is not a person who plays around the king of swords can be and is in my opinion the most masculine of all the kings just as the queen of swords is the most masculine of all the queens and that's why they get so misunderstood they can be the quote-unquote evil king and queen in the tarot deck they're the king and queen that says this is what needs to be done this is what needs to move forward this is exactly how it needs to be this is what i've been training for this is what i know this is what i want and this is going to be a time for us where we're really looking at the energies and the world that has shaped us, the people that have shaped us, the ideas, the heartbreaks, the pains, and the glories that have shaped us and saying, this is who I am. This is what I want. This is how I'm moving forward. And nothing and no one is going to hold me back or stop me. These, this is my voice. This is my desire. And this is what I want. And so there's such a, a sense here of sacred masculine energy coming forward, but there's also such a sense of determination, of focus, of honed ideas and ideals. Now it moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of, and this is the chariot. This is the subconscious and the conscious not coming together. And I do apologize if you hear fireworks going on, but my neighbors are setting off fireworks. So here with the chariot, there is this real sense of power and intention. There's this sense of the subconscious and the conscious needing to be aligned. And what's going to happen is if this isn't aligned, why we have to be mindful of this energy is that it just makes us feel like we're running in circles. It makes us feel drained and overwhelmed. And as if we don't have a say or any control control over the world around us. So being mindful of this energy is going to be very important. It moves us to our subconscious tarot, tarot, chakra energy. And this is the throat chakra. This is communication. I need to communicate what I need and what I want within my life. I need to look at the deeper desire of who I am communicating with spirit, but also communicating with myself. It moves us to our subconscious inner self, rooted self, and that is the world. The world is opening up to us. The world is moving forward in a very, very different way. And we're going to be seeing this not necessarily through everything that we've lived, but we're going to be seeing this through what we are looking at and embracing within the stories that we're being told, within the world that is around us, within our desires, our dreams, our wants. And all of a sudden, things start to open that we thought had to remain closed. It brings us to our subconscious inner self. And that's the seven of wands. Subconsciously, we're going to be so ready to start fighting. We're going to be so ready to say, you know what, I, I need to fight for this. I need to fight for that. And spirit saying, stand back, defend what is yours. Absolutely. But don't fight. Don't be so ready to fight. It's just going to be draining. It moves us to our subconscious emotional self. And that is the Knight of Wands. That's that fire sign energy coming in, that passion, that fire, that transformation, that sacred masculine energy once again being embraced. And the sense of my fire, my passion, my desire is changing and moving me forward in a way that I 
didn't realize I needed. It brings us to a place emotionally that we're coming to a realization in the public arena and saying, this is what I want. This is where I'm headed. And there's some sort of real realizations that come through that bring tremendous clarity. It brings us to our subconscious public arena self. And it's the three of wands. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Ways are being brought forward to us that we didn't expect. And it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I could move forward like this. I didn't know that this could be what I, I really wanted within my life, what I really desired. But as the doors open, we see our ships coming in. As the doors open, we see ourselves walking through avenues and embracing ways that just weren't open to us before. We just didn't think they could be. And now they are. And that's going to be tremendous. Okay. All right, Capricorn. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love that my neighbors are setting off fireworks for you guys to celebrate you. So let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. forward in peace and in harmony, Capricorn. 